Hi, I am Shilpa from Cadence Design Systems. This module talks about HDL definition, evolution, and features. Let's get started. HDL stands for Hardware Description Language. It is a text-based language. Unlike software languages, that provide a set of instructions to CPU to perform a specific task, HDL describes the structure and behavior of any electronic systems, both analog and digital, most commonly digital. It allows the description of electronic systems at various levels of abstraction, that is, at various levels of details like behavior in which design is modeled at the algorithmic level, hiding all hardware implementation details. RTL level where design is described in terms of data flow between registers and combinational logic between registers, gate level where design is implemented in terms of gate and interconnection between the gates. Though similar to software tools are used to develop hardware like CPU, microprocessor or any customized circuit design built on FPGAs on which the software built applications run. Its syntax is similar to software language, but also consists of special constructs, procedures, operators, statements and expressions in its syntax and semantics that help describe the structure and functionality of any digital circuit. Just like any software programming language where the target machine code is hidden from the programmer, tools are independent of target circuit technology like ECL, TTL, etc enabling reusability and portability across various tools. Moving on to the history, with the exponential increasing complexity of electronic designs, traditional design styles like layout and schematic has become very tedious and time-consuming. During 1980s, the U.S. Department of Research was using a text-based language for design documentation that was already captured in layout or schematic. This documentation language, which was more text-like, was easy to read and was used to share project details amongst various teams. Inspired by this, the U.S. Department of Defense initiated the development of HDL as a part of VHSIC, that is, Very High Speed Integrated Circuit Program. The main objective of this was to develop a single text-based language that will allow design, documentation, simulation and synthesis of hardware at various levels of abstraction. In December 1987, the HDL then was adopted as a standard hardware description language. Parallelly Verilog was designed by Gateway Design Automation. Both are used extensively till date. Let us summarize the difference between HDL and software languages. HDL describe the structure and design of electronic systems, whereas software languages provide a set of instructions for the hardware to perform a specific task. HDL result in hardware, software languages result in OS or software applications. It still has syntax and semantics that describe the temporal behavior and spatial structure of hardware whereas software languages provide step-by-step -step description of an algorithm to do a specific task. HDLs are more complex in nature than software languages. HDL is concurrent in nature. It supports procedural too, whereas software languages are purely sequential in nature and support timing. Whereas no timing concepts are involved in software languages. Still, Code gets translated to logic gates by the synthesizer or to configuration data that is to be loaded onto FPGAs to create customized circuit design. Examples include Verilog, VHDL and more recently, System C. Software code gets translated to machine code by the compiler, which is run on the target processor. Examples include C, C++, Java, Python etc. Moving on to the features, any hardware description language should support the following features for hardware design. Concurrency is one of the key feature. Unlike software languages that are single-threaded, executing one instruction at a time, HDLs are used to model hardware in which multiple parts of a large design are active simultaneously. 
Hence, HDLs need to be multi-threaded to support parallel actions. It should also support procedural constructs to allow implementation of hardware algorithms that execute sequentially. Looking at the diagram on the right, we see that process. P1 and P2 are parallel to each other, which in turn execute sequentially along with P3. Unlike software languages, that has no timing involved as the code executes in zero simulation time, notion of time is the most important attribute in any hardware design. Hence, it should provide some constructs to specify time and observe how the behavior of design changes with time. Every gate and interconnect in any hardware system has a certain delay associated with it. Also, in case of sequential design, we need to model clock setup and hold times. Hence, HDL should provide constructs to model clocks and delays. Considering the complexity of systems today, partitioning of large designs into smaller modules depending on their functional coherency, and connecting them up hierarchically for proper design, management and reuse. Dichotomy between data and control sections are to be maintained as different optimization techniques are applied on each of this. It should have some means to specify the width of the data types as the size of registers, memories and use multipliers are all determined by the width of the data types. Say, for example, we need to declare a variable which was range 0 to 31. It needs only 5 bits to be represented. If we declare this variable as integer and see by default that the 2-bit memories are located in hardware terms, it is a huge waste of hardware. Similarly, if we add two variables of this sort, say var1 plus var2, it requires a 32-bit adder instead of a 5-bit adder, which is highly inefficient. Hence, specifying width of the data type is highly crucial. Implementation of hardware should be independent of target IC technology, enabling reusability and portability. Data values are just not two-valued logic like in software languages, but multi-value to specify strength of the signal like uninitialized, unknown and high impedance as in real hardware. It should support text and I.O. processing for debugging and simulation. It must allow the reuse of existing features via libraries. Time ordering of signals or events are important in HDL. We need to know which event occurred first and which next within a specific time interval to enable this zero delay is modeled as delta delay. Events are ordered and then delta equal to zero is applied. HDL code should provide adequate information to the synthesis tool to generate efficient implementation. It should provide some means to differentiate concurrent from sequential block. Multi-line descriptions of hardware code are concurrent outside and sequential inside. Most of the sequential designs are sensitive and hence there must be some more means to model this. Finally, code must be both human and machine readable. Moving on to the advantages. Complex digital circuit designs require more time for development, synthesis, simulation and debugging. The invent of HDL has helped solve this problem. We can specify digital systems much faster instead of drawing the complete schematics due to its the higher level of abstraction. It takes less time for design and verification as it is more modular reusable and easily understandable. It is text-based and it is both machine and human readable. The debug cycle is also often much faster because modifications require code changes instead of tedious semantic rewiring. On the other end, the debug cycle increases if you do not know what hardware the code infers. It is modular and hence, it is easier to manage. It is independent of target IC technology like ECL and TTL, etc. Enabling reusability and portability. Most of the key features are supported by all the tool vendors, hence portable. Finally, it provides low-level synthesizable RTL implementation. In this video, 
We discussed about HDL, definition, history, features and advantages.